Gentlemen, thank you for your service. Good to see both of you again, Admiral. It's been a while. Thank you for all you're doing down south. Uh, General, I want to focus on some issues I know have already been mentioned. Um, first, on missile defense. One, one, I think, good news story. It doesn't, doesn't uh, make a lot of press, but in the last few years, there's been a strong bipartisan support in this committee, in this Congress, on building up our missile defenses. I think in part because of the threat from North Korea. However, there's been challenges, right? Right now we have 20 empty silos at Fort Greeley, which makes no sense. Some estimates are it's gonna be 10 years before we have missiles in there. Can you talk to me about that and why in, why in the world aren't we filling those silos as soon as possible? Senator, my goal would be to have additional capability and capacity as soon as possible. I continue to work close with John Hill at the Missile Defense Agency. My top priority is to stay on timeline to field additional capabilities against ballistic missiles uh, that could attack our homeland. And isn't that in part because there's in intel that given the rate of what North Korea is producing in terms of nukes and intercontinental ballistic missiles that their capability could overwhelm our capabilities as early as 2025? Senator, I'd like to have that conversation in a classified environment. I remain extremely concerned about uh, the capacity of the ballistic missile defense system uh, going forward. And would quickly fielding the NGI help with addressing that challenge? The sooner we can field the NGI, the, the better for addressing that challenge. There was an article in a defense media news source recently saying that the NGI decision is on the Deputy Secretary of Defense's desk and yet it's being delayed. Some are thinking that she might kind of use this as a budget cutting tool to say maybe we don't need it. Is that a good idea to delay this and uh, have the Pentagon say we don't need NGI right now? Senator, I'll stay out of the policy aspect of that. Well, decision. you've kind of already dumped into it. so. Let me get your personal opinion on that. Is that a good idea for the deputy secretary or the secretary to say, hmm, I'm going to cut, let's figure out where we can cut the budget. Let's cut the budget on the system that protects the entire United States of America from a clear and growing threat. Is that a good idea? Again, that's a policy decision. My, my uh, perspective is about the risk, and I remain very concerned about the risk of having a uh, capable ballistic missile defense system against future capacity changes and capability changes by threats. Would the risk increase if we cut the NGI uh, program? Um, my in your personal opinion? In my, uh, in my opinion, uh, cutting that would reduce our capability to defend against uh, increased capacity and capability of any threats. Mr. Chairman, this is a huge issue, and I think we as a committee has been very bipartisan need to send a message to the Pentagon like, hey, fund this now. Um, it's clear it would be a risk to the country. Let me, uh, let me turn to the Arctic. Um, I know there's been a number of discussions already. Uh, the good news is in his confirmation hearing, General Secretary Austin, the Deputy Secretary, Dr. Hicks, both said they were committed to this committee to fully fund the new um, Arctic strategies. I think the Army's gonna introduce it today. Um, with regard to fully funding the different service-oriented strategies. Um, Senator Wicker talked about icebreakers. It's good we're finally building them. It's taking too long. There is this leasing option that the Trump administration was looking at at the end of the administration, and now the Biden administration is looking at hard. Do you think that's a good idea to close this icebreaker gap with the opportunity to lease icebreakers, get them home ported in America's Arctic, uh, which is Alaska. What's your thought on that? Uh, Senator, that's a policy decision. I have a requirement for capability. I'm agnostic to what provides that capability. But you think we need the capability? Absolutely. Good, so do I. So does this committee, by the way. Um, let me ask one final thing. There's gonna be a meeting, high level meeting between our diplomats and Chinese diplomats in Anchorage uh, Thursday and Friday. We talk about Alaska in terms of the Arctic, but as you know, uh, General, Alaska also uh, is critical for the Asia Pacific, particularly as we look at dispersing of our forces. We had the PACOM commander here last week talking about challenges perhaps in the Taiwan Strait as early as five to six years from now. 
How important is it, do you think, that the Chinese, when they come to Alaska, see that there's, within the end of this year, going to be over 100 fifth-generation fighters based in Alaska that can get to the Taiwan Strait probably in six hours? Uh, Senator, Alaska is a strategic location. Uh, it's a strategic location for homeland defense, something that we must preserve and preserve that capability. I think it's important that they see our capabilities. It's part of our overarching deterrence. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.